stickers are a very popular trending product on the likes of Etsy and other digital platforms. So to have the creation process for them under your belt so you don't have to rely on outside sources to create them is a useful skill to gain. They can be as quick and easy as you wish or as complicated as you wish to make them. And this video will take you through the basic steps from creation to saving. Now, if you've not been here before, my name's Jane Willingale of Silverzone Printables and I create videos for this channel based on low content publishing and printables for Etsy or similar platforms and tips for using the Affinity Suite to achieve that. And if that kind of thing interests you, then click on the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload new videos like this. And if you find this video helpful, then please do click on the like button which will help this video get seen and help me grow this channel. I really do appreciate it. First of all, I'm going to draw a rectangle, which is more or less how we would start off. Uh, I'll make that slightly bigger so we can see what we're doing. Then, uh, because I want a jagged edge and not the straight edge, I'm going to choose a star shape. And I'll choose the double, double star tool to get um, a varied point edge and draw the star. Then I'm going to change the number of points to quite a few, around about 23, and change the inner radius so that I get a jagged edge and the point radius, if I bring out like that, it gives me a jagged edge with different size triangles. Okay, so you can see roughly where I'm going with this, I'm sure by now. We're going, what we're gonna do is combine the two shapes so that the jagged edge appears along the edge of the washi tape. You could actually leave the star shapes at either end just to give an unusual um, ending to turn it into a sticker instead of washi tape. I'm going to put a, a an outline on these so you can see what happens with them. I'm also going to convert them to curves and the shortcut for that is control return. So now if I press A I get the nodes come up on both shapes. Let's zoom in. So I don't need half of these shapes, sorry, half of these nodes. And I also want the star behind the rectangle so I can see where they're going to end up. So if I line it up about there, turn on the node tool and delete all of the nodes up to that point and it will then leave me with an edge. I don't need that one and I don't need that one. If I then select all of the points on the star except for these two on the corners, I can then move the edges down until I get a zigzag that fits more to the edge of the rectangle. with the points and the nodes to get the shape that you're happy with. I've just moved those around a little bit because I wasn't very happy with the shape I had. We could still have a slightly bigger point here. Then I'm going to select both shapes and join them together by using the add out of the boolean section. And that gives me a, a fairly natural looking jagged edge as if the tape has been torn. 
So just to backtrack a little bit, um, I will select that image now, copy it, then join those two. Move that one to the other end, flip it so it turns the other way. Add it to the edge and make sure you've got it lined up. Select the two images and once again press add. So now you have a shape that is all in one with a jagged edge either end. And to add the extra sort of wave into it that you would normally get with a piece of tape, we're going to uh, again press the node button and add some extra nodes down the side. And then manipulate those by choosing the convert to smooth on those nodes on the straight lines only, which will give you your Bezier curves, which you can now move in when I select the right ones um, to change the shape and curve of the straight lines, which now turns it more into a slight 3D shape. So if I take the outline off that, change the color to something slightly more pleasing. A few more by copying the original one and just changing the shapes very slightly, flipping them round, making them narrower, making them wider and an extra long one down the side. So the next stage would be if you wish to add textures, you would do that by uh, adding extra layers. But first of all, we will group all of the shapes that we have. Control G to group. So that gives us one group of the shapes. Next, we would pull in a couple of textures by going File place and I'm going to use some material images that I have which gives the texture of the material as well as um, a pattern. Let's try that one. And if I move that down below the shapes, in preparation for using it as a pattern, and the group above, which is the shapes, now needs to be rasterized. So we'll go to, we select the group, we go to layer, and we choose rasterize which then turns all of those shapes into pixel shapes instead of uh, vector curves, which they were, they were before. Now, if I add that shape to the uh, group above, you will see that that pattern fits into all of those shapes. Okay, so there's one texture and straight away we have one pattern. So now to add uh, another texture to the layer, and you don't have to add loads of textures, you can add as many or as little as you want, but just to give it a bit more relief here, we will uh, find another texture, and I have some photographs of trees, which will give a, a lined texture, or we could have grass and leaves. Let's try that one. And because I've brought that in at this level, it has already fitted into the shape. And to get texture instead of the pattern, we turn the opacity down. And you can see that adds another dimension to the whole file. You could move the patterns around, turn the opacity down on the original pattern, and you will start to see the leaf pattern come through, which changes the colours and changes the textures. 
You can give a more 3D effect to it by adding some effects by clicking on layer effects at the bottom here and choosing one of the extra choices here. If I went for a 3D effect, and it would help if I actually picked a layer, so we'll choose the top one, choose the 3D effect, click on it to be able to edit the features of it and play around with these settings here and you can see now that we're getting a curve down the edge of the shapes which gives it uh, a raised effect and makes it look more 3D. You can play around with all of these for colours and settings. Change the lighting effect by clicking on the light source and if we move that around you can see it changes the direction of the light coming in. And again you can turn the opacity down to soften the effect. You could, instead of choosing 3D, you could choose bevel and emboss, which will give an embossed edge uh, similar to the 3D effect, but also adds a slight shadow and gives quite a nice soft effect. You can add an outer shadow and play around with the direction here. You can start to see the shadow show as I move the direction around. Make it uh, larger. It's black at the moment, so it probably needs to be a, a slightly softer color. So we'll turn the, the gray down here under shadow. So you can see that by playing around with different shapes and different effects and just one or two fi uh, extra files, extra layers put in, you could get things like a smoke effect or a fire, a picture of a fire uh, an image, which would give uh, even more texture to the patterns that are already in there. And the final stage of building this template for yourself would be to be able to export all of these shapes as separate PNGs and JPEGs and SVGs and really any other format that you want. And I cover the export section of this with a slightly different in a separate video. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the slice tool. We go to the export persona in the top left hand corner and it's the third one across. And on the right hand side, as I showed you in an earlier video, you get two different tabs come up for layers and slices. And we're going to create a slice for each of these shapes. You can already see that the mouse icon has changed and we need to draw a slice around each of the shapes, which is a little bit fiddly can move them around a bit once you've done it. You just need to be as close as you can be to the edges of the shape you're selecting. There we go. And I would save it at that point to make sure that I didn't have to do that again if anything happened to the file. So now we go each of these to select the export format that I want to use. PNG comes as default, as I've said before. So I'm just going to add in a JPEG format as well. And I'm going to copy that export format to the clipboard and then I'm going to choose all of the other layers and paste it, replace effectively. And now we have both formats for each shape 
that I have set up. And then I will export those uh, to a folder and split them up into JPEGs and PNGs as I have shown you in the batch export video. So I won't go through that again because you can go back to that previous video to check that. But that will give you the process for setting up your own washi tape files templates and you can use that for stickers, you can use that for well any shapes really that you want to be able to change as a batch. I've been Jane Willingale at Silverzone Printables. Until the next time, thanks for watching.